Okay, so I wanted to connect up some of these uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. Actually, these are nickel cadmium, they're old cells, but they seem to be okay. Let's go my very favoured Panasonic electric screwdriver. And obviously these two need to be connected together. On, on the um, actual product there's a spot welded steel strip, um, which is spot welded to here and spot welded to there. But I have seen other websites where the guys are soldering some of these batteries and I thought well using normal solder might be a little bit too much. Um, the modern uh, 6040 leaded solder which is a lot of DIY people use but is not really used that much in industry because of the um, uh, ROHS uh, regulations with regard to it's now almost pure tin solder with a trace element of silver and flux as opposed to the eutectic solder wire that used to be used which was 60% uh, lead and 40% tin and that was a eutectic uh, mixture which means it's the lowest melting point 60-40 okay so well, that's a bit hot so I think ah, I've heard of low temperature solders I'll go online and have a look so went to a reputed, reputable um, soldering site in America and these guys are professionals and you can see the price of this stuff, $75. Oh, wow, yeah, expensive, but maybe, you know, get a reasonable length. Um, three foot sp spool, three foot of solder wire, diameter 0 0.03, is $75. So, expensive stuff. Be cheaper to buy a battery spot welder from China for a hundred quid, $140 or something like that, or make one yourself. And um, anyway, so we are. 58% bismuth, 42% tin. Bismuth is absolutely, it was thought not to be radioactive, but according to Wikipedia, it's quite interesting reading. It is radioactive, but it's such a low level, it would take longer than the age of the universe for half of it to decay. So in realistic terms, in practical terms, it's not radioactive, but it's a recent discovery. And it's got melting point 138 degrees centigrade, okay? So I thought, wow, yeah, expensive, but Never mind. So then I went to good old eBay, and not that one, this one, and the other one's off the printer. Um, you can see 40 gram roll of it, £4.99. And the same mixture, uh, low solder wire, uh, same, same eutectic mixture of bismuth and tin, and ordered one for uh, Four ninety nine, and here it is, and it's arrived. And you can see, it says forty two percent percent tin, fifty eight percent bismuth. Low temperature soldering wire, good for electronics, flows well. And bear in mind, from this document here, this if this is the correct stuff, it should melt around about one hundred forty degrees centigrade. Okay. So anyway, um, so I'll set my iron up. To, I know this is calibrated, this soldering iron. It's a very expensive piece of kit from Weller. So it's within 10 degrees of where it's supposed to be because I've checked it multiple times when I'm soldering sensitive electronic components, mostly laser diodes. Um, and here it is. And so the iron um, should melt this. I've set the iron to 140. Okay. So that's pretty close to the 138. Let's make it 150 just to give a margin of error. So it's definitely, the iron is definitely going to be hot enough. I was waiting for it to stabilize. And when it's stable, we'll try and see if we can melt this stuff. It's very shiny. The other thing about the bismuth solders I've seen is that they're quite dull in, they're dull looking. Um, that may be significant, may not. It may be just the way the other manufacturers make them. But this looks very shiny. It's quite, it feels more like, um, it's a little bit, stiffer than uh, ordinary leaded solder wire, you know, 6040 lead solder wire. Um, and it feels more like the um, lead free stuff is a little bit tougher, a little bit um, less malleable really. It's just not, doesn't feel, if I pick that up I could almost think, well that's not actually solder, it might be almost copper wire, but obviously it isn't. So the iron is now sitting at 150, the lights come on, it's stable. So let's just uh, have a go with this and see whether we can melt the solder. So here we go. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for that so you can see a bit better. There we go. 
So here we go, try and melt the solder. No, not even touching it at 150. So at 138 we expected it to melt. And we're going to now try it with, uh, this is normal 6040 leaded solder wire, the old stuff. And yeah, again, that doesn't melt. Okay, so let's try 200. So turning the iron up to 200 here, we'll see what we've got. At the moment, it's not looking good. It's not looking like it is a eutectic mixture of bismuth and tin. It looks like it's something else. So let's see what we've got. So, uh, yeah, let the thing stabilize. I was expecting this to melt and be able to solder these battery cells very easily, but I have my doubts now, really do. So let's try again. We're now 210. Now it's ringing 200. I'll give it a few seconds for the tip to stabilize. Yeah, the lights come on. So, no, this is the leaded wire, lead solder. You can see it's it's not melting stuff on the tip is still just about molten but there's enough heat in the tip to melt the wire it's just softening it but not melting it so then let's try this this stuff should melt very easily now the um, the bismuth tin wire let's try it no not melting at all not even the slightest not even the same as the solder wire so let's turn up to 220, which is around about 10 degrees below the melting point of the lead tin solder wire. Get it out of the way. So here we are, we've got lead tin again, this one. We're trying this one. Yeah, it's melting, okay. Now I can feel resistance there, it's melting very slowly, I have to push it and push the solder wire up against the solder tip and it's not melting quickly, it's just melting, just, you have to push it, you can feel the resistance as the uh, solder gets in contact with the solder tip and you can see it's staying very blobby on the end of the tip. But yeah, at 220 it's melting, okay, so let's just clean the soldering iron tip off again. And try the bismuth tin solder, which should have melted a long time ago. No. no. <laughs> not melting at all. So not only is it not low temperature solder, it's also got a higher melting point than the tin lead solder. Okay, so th this isn't what it's supposed to be, there's something else. Okay, so let's just try knocking up to 250. Okay, let's stabilize at 250 for a moment. There we go, it's stabilizing, the light is on. The higher the temperature, the quicker it uh, melts. So, Solder wire, ordinary tin solder, melting easily now. Yeah, you can solder a joint with that, it's melting fine. So that was the lead, the lead tin solder. Let's clean the tip, making sure it's all perfectly clean. Let's try this stuff again, see what we've got. So, um, melting slowly. It's not quite as low a melting point as the lead tin solder. I can feel it resistance, but it is melting pretty well. So, and the conclusion is that whatever this is, it's probably just ordinary tin lead solder that's been relabeled and sold as a specialist solder. But it's not specialist. It's, um, it isn't what it says it is for sure on the label and as for soldering at low temperature for components, you might as well use the tin lead solder because I think what this is, is a low temperature solder that's from um, 
China and whether it has any lead in it I don't know it says lead free here so if it's not lead and it's not 58% bismuth and 42% tin which you remember should melt at 138 degrees Celsius it must be something else but it isn't what it's supposed to be um, it's a product that's got a low melting point perhaps it hasn't got any lead in it so it may be a lower melting point than the standard lead free solder I don't know let's just try some lead free solder and see what that does Okay, so here's a roll of lead free solder. This is definitely um, almost pure tin with a little bit of solder in and a couple of other bits and pieces, but 99% tin. Let's see what this does. Yeah, and you see that feels the same. That feels slightly higher of temperature than the other two. So, yeah, I don't think this isn't, um, this one doesn't seem to be. Uh, lead free solder with tin in it. It's got something either lead, either it's just ordinary 6040 leaded solder, but it isn't what it says it is. Um, in fact, I might as well solder my battery with a standard leaded material because it makes no difference whatsoever. Just sort that, find that interesting before you go blowing your cash on this stuff because it doesn't melt at any lower temperature than the, uh, the normal 6040 leaded solder. So, anyway. I thought you might find that interesting.